we will discuss about uh, derived distribution of function of two random variable in last lecture we discussed about derived distribution for function of one random variable that one was very easy to find how through jacobian approach we had already seen that if we are having a random variable x and we come up with a new random variable as a function of x that we are calling it uh, derived random variable and then and we denote it by y so y happens to be function of x and we know the distribution of x only so based on the distribution of x how we can find the distribution of y and here we are taking from the con uh, continuum perspective that means x is a continuous random variable and uh, from there also y is happens to be continuous random variable and now our intention is to find uh, uh, what is the property density function of y so in order to find property density function of y y i had given two approach that means anyhow here you have to find uh, cumulative distribution function of y so uh, when in the process of finding community distribution function of y uh, you may you might have already seen that uh, uh, two situation would be there that uh, in one situation that this community distribution function would be explicit function of y then job is very simple what just differentiate this community distribution function of y and you will get pdf of why that derived distribution what we call it but another situation is coming that suppose it is not uh, able to we are not able to uh, write this uh, cdf explicitly in term of y that uh, that means uh, this one is written in implicit way then what we have to do we are going for uh, jacobian approach what is meaning of jacobian approach we know that uh, y is a function of x so for each y if you are observing uh, for each observation of y there is a pre image of y that we are calling x okay so from here we come up with this kind of uh, approach relation between i am saying it relation i am not saying that x would be uh, uh, functional approach so here from here it will imply that x is what actually it happens to be pre image of uh, y x is a pre so that concept we are writing in mathematically like this way so if suppose this g is here invertible function then simply th this would be one one correspondence due to that uh, simply we can say that it is uh, g inverse inverse of j mm, g okay if uh, it is not invertible there is no issue just call it pre image collection of all pre image okay so it is just the, in that time uh, it would be just relation and Uh, smartly have to uh, we have to uh, approach this one branch wise approach so uh, during the process of uh, uh, applying this uh, dealing with uh, g inverse or uh, uh, inverse image of g that time call it inverse image of g uh, branch wise handle it branch wise then definitely uh, if you are handling with branch wise then it would be invertible branch wise so here in the process of handling so what would be derived distribution it would be just uh, distribution of uh, original random variable x uh, here x is what x happens to pre image of y so we are writing this one in term of y so you can call this function and give a new name h of y actually it is just function of y so you can call it it, it would be so uh, the original distribution with argument uh, h of y in plus of x we are writing h of y and it is branch wise invertible uh, again i would like to say that it is branch wise invertible and uh, this one is the original distribution after that we are coming with a jacobian factor so you can call it jacobian factor so here what would be jacobian factor or Jac jacobian of transformation that means differentiate uh, h, h of y with respect to y so everything in right hand side you observe in term of y so this process we had already seen in the last lecture it is talking about function of one variable today we will have function of two variable okay so here jacobian would be not as a scalar number here jacobian would be what it it would come as a matrix and we have to take determinant of that matrix determinant of that matrix concept 
will come it okay so it depends upon what kind of uh, function of sev uh, several variable what you are taking so it, it will totally depend upon that okay and later we will talk about uh, convolutional approach so if function of uh, situation is that linear if you are dealing with linear function of several variable then that time convolution is very interesting approach through that you can also find derived distribution that approach we will also discuss and that one is totally uh, what uh, very much applicable in uh, uh, what uh, kind of uh, system that uh, uh, when you are dealing in control system everyone might have already gone through uh, LTI system linear time invariant system anyone who would like to recall have you gone through LTI or system or not anyone have you taken that control system course or not anyone Okay, so do you know about linear time invariant system, LTI system? It is very simple kind of system. If you are dealing with control theory, uh, this is the what we call it uh, magic behind all those uh, control kind of uh, things like uh, whether it is robotics whether it is drone whether it is uh, uh, any other kind of instrument which is uh, uh, having control kind of input then there would be output okay so that generally simplest approach the of modeling those problem is that uh, linear time invariant system so two kind of uh, equation you will see there one there would be a con continuous dependent on time so with respect to that we will get a state a, st a space representation we will have representation like, like this x dot equal to a x this we are calling it a state a space equation plus b times u u we are calling it uh, control input x we are calling it system variable okay this simply overall we, this first equation we are calling it uh, system equation and after that we are having observation so observation happens to be uh, it, it again it is a function of a state variable x plus control input u sorry d another coefficient so here what is happening that uh, overall we have to uh, manage a b c d all these are what coefficient matrix so this one is what uh, continuous uh, time a uh, state of space so here time is continuous that's where derivative we are taking so we, we can take another form of a state of space uh, uh, equation in discrete time what is that in that case we will have this kind of uh, dynamical system that means uh, discreetly we will take time that t then next time would be t plus 1 then next time would be t plus 2 like that scenario is coming so here x of t plus 1 it is what a linear function of uh, the present time x of t you can call it x of t plus control input everyone might be aware of all these terms what what is a a we are calling it system matrix b we are calling it control uh, matrix and c we are calling it uh, what uh, uh, here y of t so all these are the having uh, uh, output it contributes in output and observability it can c and d contributing in observability factor so this one is the uh, what we call it discrete time a state of space equation so if you are saying this one then if someone is asking what is the solution simplest way to find the solution of lti system then that time you will see that uh, simplest way if you are taking any general input then what is the solution what is the solution of uh, uh, simplest solution of this lti system then you will see that it is just actually convolution function of uh, this uh, transfer function h and control input 
so this is the convolution approach is coming so this convolution will see it, uh, why because we will see that it is just a linear function linear approach is coming here uh, that, that's where we are coming here uh, we will see it here you can see that, see that why is just a linear function of x and u and uh, in that process uh, why linear term simply it will come as yt would be linear function of transfer of, uh, <laughs> transfer function and unit function so that's way we are able to write in convolution pattern so convolution pattern there are various um, actual way to write convolution is uh, we are writing like this way uh, we are integrating this one from minus infinity to infinity and here convolution is very much symmetric whether you uh, write a, a convolution of h with u or u with h both are same both are same so it depends upon what approach you want to proceed so if, if you proceed with like this way uh, u of top times h of t minus top and you are integrating with respect to top so this actually it is uh, con this lti system convolution is giving very interesting way to compute your uh, that res response your response so this you you call it response so in order to compute response or output or whatever there are various name uh, you can say that so it is a very simple way to call it response uh, response uh, to compute how to compute response of a lti system so we compute it through convolution approach it is very simple that's just here what is happening that we need to know what is the what is what is u and what is what is h and then job would be done there would be no any issue okay easily we can compute directly through this uh, convolution approach so that's why uh, here it is very much related with linear system so that's why we, when we will discuss about function so remember that uh, uh, from the perspective of uh, what we call it uh, here uh, distribution so everything you can treat all these random in sense that time what you have to do uh, you have to uh, smartly deal with this derived distribution okay derived distribution of function of several random variables so so that perspective will come and that uh, proba probably i will cover in um, previous uh, next classes after midterm okay so coming to outline of today's lecture first here i would like to discuss about uh, derived distribution of uh, single function of several variable okay then we will talk about uh, that means uh, derived distribution for function of several variable that means we will have a function z uh, and we are having two random variable x and y and z is what it is function of uh, x and y F, we should not take okay we will take this uh, this kind of situation so so that situation is coming here Now, there is one more situation as a function of several random variable. What is that? Uh, that situation is here. Like uh, we are talking about transformation of random variable. What is meaning of what is the difference between function and transformation? So here uh, we say that we are taking function of two random variable. We can take function of three random variable. Then that means there is a single function of two random variable, three random variable like that situation but when we are talking about transformation that means we are transforming one space to another space one other space to another space uh, most probably of the same dimension so that means if you are having a two dimensional space uh, whose x axis is described by a random variable x well along x axis horizontal axis random variable x is observing value along vertical axis random variable y is observing value so this one is one two dimensional space we are getting it and now we are willing to transform this uh, space to another two dimensional space uh, by introducing a transformation so in that process we are getting again two dimensional space along where the horizontal uh, axis uh, along horizontal axis uh, the first uh, function of x y that we call it z z is uh, observing value along horizontal axis and w is observing value uh, along vertical axis then what does it mean that simply we say that z random variable z it is a function of x y so you can say that it is first function of x y it depends on the first and second depends upon your choice what you are 
whom you want to call first and uh, whom you want to call it second depends upon your choice okay so all these are just generic notation and w is another function of x y so here what is happening that uh, the dimension of system remains same that uh, just what is happening that we have transformed so that means if you are having a planar kind of plane plane but what is happening that uh, if you want to curve it by uh, twisting we can make a curve like sur curve surface so that means what is happening that we just transform the plane to curve so that situation is coming and suppose we are having curve then we can uh, make it plain so such kind of situation is coming so th that criteria is coming as a uh, transformation okay what we call it transformation so such situation if you are having that situation then how we can find derived distribution of the transform random variable okay transform random variable or joint uh, here x y uh, those are having joint, definitely those will have joint random variable because those are continuously varying together so that's why here uh, it will have a joint random variable density or distribution suppose x y are continuous random variable then these two would have joint jointly uh, joint continuous uh, density probability density function joint density probability density function likewise we have transformed x y to w z so that's way uh, w z or z w also would have joint distribution so that we will denote it by uh, f f of z w so that is the scenario so we will see what is the relation between these two so what is the relation with, between these two that uh, we had already seen the relation between in case of uh, uh, single random variable uh, function of single random variable we had already seen that uh, the relation is just we are taking density of the original and we are multiplying with uh, corresponding Jacobian, Jacobian. So he, corresponding Jacobian term is coming with modulus okay so similar situation will come here so in order to find uh, uh, derived density of z and w it would be what this would be equal to density times Jacobian factor would come here same same uh, level of uh, theory you will get here so here just Jacobian factor would come here so those things we will see it in today's class okay so first uh, let us discuss about uh, drive distribution for function of uh, several random variable generally several means just we will discuss about function of two random variable later you can go for function of three and four depends upon your uh, simplicity so we will first uh, we, we will discuss here about derived distribution for function of a uh, continuous random variable uh, two continuous random variable here we will so suppose we are having uh, x and y two jointly continuous random variable and we are coming with a z and new random variable that happens to be function of x and y joint function of x and y that means uh, what is simply we call it uh, uh, derived random variable z it is a derived random variable then how we can find uh, density of z so uh, here uh, prior to find density of z uh, easily in uh, that uh, expected value rule we can find expectation of z uh, that we had already seen that in uh, case of discrete random variable in order to find as expectation of z what we do uh, just apply expected va value uh, rule what does it uh, do uh, it do that uh, in order to find expectation of z we are treating z as a function of x y and here in the place of uh, uh, the distribution of z or density of z we are taking uh, distribution of x and y because uh, z happens to be a function of x and y and this would be given to us so that's why through this expected value rule easily we can find uh, expectation of z here it is very easy to, through uh, expected value rule uh, till now if we don't know derived distribution of z we can despite of that we can find expectation of z through this expected value rule uh, i had already explained it for uh, uh, discrete random variable just replace that summation here by integration and th then things is done okay and here one example i would like to take it here so so if uh, uh, z uh, happens to be function of uh, these two random variable x and y then here we are interested in its distribution okay so this uh, i will take example of this later 
you know so this one is very simple i don't need to explain further this one is very uh, easy because the joint distribution of x and y would be given to us so we don't need to compute uh, derived distribution of z okay so but what is happening that uh, for other perspective we need to compute uh, derived distribution of z so how we can compute derived distribution of z so again the approach would be same in order to compute derived distribution of z as a function of x y what we have to do we have to come up with cdf of z and then different by different if is cdf of z is having explicit form as a function of z then by differentiating we will get cdf pdf of z okay if it is not possible it is implicitly then we have to deal with other situation okay so one situation is just uh, try to define cdf of z what it is defined as a probability that z is taking value up to z we know that and but what we know about z z happens to be function of uh, x y so that's why we are replacing z by this function g of x y and now here g is known to us so what we do we just we do little bit algebra here and after that what we observe this probability would be converted into that uh, jointly x and y is less than equal to uh, g inverse of uh, uh, inverse image of z less than equal to inverse image of z so z it would be fixed here so what is happening that so it is just about uh, it is talking about uh, event in the x y plane one event in the x y plane okay so it is just a subset of x y plane it is just you can call it one kind of event so uh, we can find probability of this event so suppose this region we are getting it due to it may not be a, a disk it may be something else so it may be some irregular phase so uh, what is happening that, uh, that if you are willing to compute probability of this region or this event probably you can call it, it event a it is described by so total this scenario you can call it event a so if you are willing to compute this probability of uh, this event how you can compute that you can compute it just uh, by the property of uh, joint density function that means you integrate the joint density function over this region so this is the region defined by uh, this uh, functional approach uh, set theoretic approach okay so definitely it would have uh, once uh, uh, g would be given to us then it will have an explicit form that we will see it and uh, just we need to compute this uh, double integration over this region we are not integrating this joint density function over the complete plane xy plane we are just integrating over the uh, this region only over this region and here once uh, uh, after integrating this one it would be just function of z everything would be adjusted it would be just function of z afterward what we will have what will happen afterward just we have to differentiate uh, this and we will get we will get density of z so this would be the density of z this one is the one this one is one approach another approach will come later uh, that uh, one function would be this one and uh, that uh, uh, next approach is just dealing with transformation so first i need to uh, discuss about transformation then i will cover that second approach so in that second approach what would happen that means transformation is talking about uh, transformation of uh, one space of same dimension to another space of same dimension but what we observe this z is just function of x y okay and we are having only one function of x y so we need another function so we will introduce another function w as uh, you can call it that term it is g1 and w would be g2 g2 of x y then how can bring another function any would like to highlight how we can bring another function if w is not given anyone would give idea how to come up with the next function if we, if it is not given that w is not given how what is the simplest approach to come up with that only g1 is known to us what would be g2 anyone we have x we have y we know about joint distribution of x and y so everything we know if you know joint distribution that means we know also marginal distribution of x and y okay so also conditional everything we know so if someone is saying that uh, how we can in the perspective of transformation how we can come up with another function of x y very simple either take w as equal to x or equal to y as per your simplicity then it becomes a transformation so that way w would be uh, equal to either x or y then we are having uh, again x y plane would be transformed to z w plane so so that uh, uh, that would provide another approach approach to to compute uh, density of z 
okay so that that we will see later so here coming to uh, so that i have already mentioned it here like this way so here z z of as a function of x y that g of x y is given to us but w uh, regarding w it is not given so w we will take either uh, x or y or function of x or function of y depends upon what situation is there so situation will suggest what kind of w you would like to take so simply it is very much a specific that either it would involve x or y so in that situation so that one that one is talking about approach to so uh, let us take one example uh, from approach one perspective that means we are just confined to find density of z only okay we are not worrying about w right now and from transfer, uh, transformation perspective so uh, here question is coming like this way uh, x and y are two independent uh, uniformly distributed random variable uniformly distributed between 0 to 1 okay so x is having density 1 between 0 to 1 y is also having density 1 between 0 to 1 so very much symmetric uh, you can see that uh, uh, in, if you are, are willing to see joint behavior of joint density in the xy plane then only in first uh, quadrant between in over this uh, rectangle unit uh, rectangle density is 1 outside this density is 0 horizontal axis this x or vertical axis y okay so uh, explicitly we can visualize joint density of this one okay now we we are coming with a function of x y as how uh, by multiplying x and y okay so z is just equal to x into y so g is defined as x into y okay now our job is that we have to find what is the cdf and once we are having cdf then what is the pdf so those things we have to find it so just we will apply here what we will apply the definition of cdf what does it say cdf of z it would be defined as a property that z is observing value up to this uh, particular z okay and what is z here z is actually uh, Function of x and y that means z equal to x into y and here we are putting z equal to x into y and was what we do afterward we just do algebra a little bit algebra and after that what we observe here this property has been converted to this property that oh, property that x is of observing value up to z minus y remember that here we observe random variable both side here this side and this side so this probability if you are willing to compute this probability you have to delicate, delicately handle it so how so uh, there are there are various ways to handle it so just first uh, see situation like this way okay So I'm right, zooming the previous picture. This one is unit uh, rectangle. Now what we do? See the pattern over x equal to small z by y. Here remember that x and y are variable here, random variable. They are taking value randomly. And what is happening that? Uh, here you can see that uh, uh, z is fixed at a time z is fixed okay any question till now any question if you are ready to ask then please ask Who will say anything about this? If you understand this logic, here yeah, remember that x is observing value along horizontal axis, y is observing value along vertical axis. Okay, so tell me how we can handle it? This function. What is uh, name of this line? it is not a perfect plot what is the name of this line anyone see the geometry i am giving geometry of everything anyone tell me what is the name of that line if you are listening try to answer it uh, actually uh, you need to answer it by voice because uh, every time it is difficult to see the comment segment so it is not it is not a small x equal to a small y this one is capital x equal to capital y 
ओके चल आर यू गेटिंग इट This one is capital X equal to capital Y, and relatively you have to see the nature of behavior of this one, how it will vary, how it will vary. Okay, that you have to see. So then you will able to compute uh, this uh, CDF of Z uh, in terms of uh, Z, small Z. Okay, so we are trying to compute this probability. So just focus on this here variability of uh, uh, here. What we do? Uh, just we try to compute this integral then we have to look into variability of uh, the corresponding x and y uh, by uh, taking this joint density of x y as a, we we know that this joint joint density is a constant that one is equal to 1 so all about that what would be the limit of x and what would be the limit of y so if you are integrating x first so that we are taking this one first so journey would be like this way so here at this point what what is here journey it would be like this way so here what is happening that uh, obviously x equal to 0 here and where x is coming out where x is coming out it will here x is varying up to z by y x is varying Up to z by y. Okay, so what is the equation of z? Z is here uh, fixed. Z is it is fixed, and uh, here uh, simply once you are varying along this way, then in that case uh, for each fix y, uh, we will have x equal to z by y. x equal each for each fix y because uh, here uh, integrating you can take line this way. Can take line this way. Okay. There are various y, so that also you have to control over y as well. So that's why integration is going zero. Uh, first, see the variability zero to uh, z by y. Okay. Afterward, you are trying to integrate uh, with respect to y. So y variation of y is from zero to one. So that you have to completely take uh, uh, fixed limit of y, uh, the outer one. outer one okay but again you have to focus on here here it is very de delicately you can compute this one we know, we know situation would or here it would have two scenario so what scenario is coming so it may uh, may may be less than equal to 1 may be greater than equal to 1 okay may be greater than equal to 1 so if this one is greater than equal to one so what situation would be so how we know that the joint density is taking value zero when uh, that uh, value of x y is out of this uh, square so it simply it is going out of the square okay so that time it would be zero so what is we have to uh, uh, here uh, in the upper limit of x we have to decide that this uh, the li upper limit of x must be either uh, minimum of these two if uh, this z by y is going up away from 1 then that time just we will take it we will limit it up to 1 we want go beyond 1 we don't want to go beyond 1 okay that situation is coming so that's why we are taking here limit this limit would be converted into uh, this limit minimum of 1 uh, or z by y so it depends upon if, if z by y is less than equal to 1 then we will proceed with this one if uh, what is happening that if z by y is greater than equal to just we will confine to 1 so that situation is coming so overall simply what we do here we are integrating dx uh, here the argument here uh, integrand is constant so simply after integration what we are seeing that we are just we are having this integral we are we are having this situation this integral now we try to control this integral uh, once we we are having scenario like this way so here we put condition over z so one variability is so we know that here z by y minimum of these two we can take it okay so overall this quantity would be less than equal to one overall this quantity would be less than equal to so uh, here here we see that x is taking value between 0 to 1 between y because uh, x is having uh, 
positive density or non-zero density only for this value. Y is likewise also having a non-zero density for Y when it is taking observing value between 0 to 1. And if you talk about product, uh, that means uh, it, that, that one is Z. Z will also observe value between 0 to 1. So everyone might be comfortable with this uh, approach. That means simply it simpli simplify that uh, we are trying to find density of Z only for this value of Z. Outside this value, uh, density would be zero. We don't have to bother about. Okay. So if you are uh, doing that, so we just uh, bifurcate this one. We are first taking limit of uh, uh, Y from zero to Z. Okay. Zero to Z and after z to 1 so this scenario is if you are taking limit from 0 to uh, z that time what would be minimum of this one so minimum of this one it would be simply uh, uh, simply it say that uh, it would be just equal to 1 so 1 is coming then if you are taking limit afterward z to 1 z to 1 if you are taking z to 1 then minimum of these two would be z by y from geometry easily you can see all these and after that integrate this and you are getting a simple integral z minus uh, z times log of z which natural gas e okay so this is the uh, cdf of z which is having explicit form differentiate it and get your pdf likewise uh, another approach that that one is coming this one is uh, coming through law of total probability it is uh, relatively much easier how uh, than this one as much as information you are having you can apply all those so here what you observe that law of uh, total probability that means you have to come up with conditioning approach that conditioning through conditioning approach uh, uh, what is happening that this property can be written as uh, this conditional property uh, integration conditioning through y if you introduce conditioning through y then uh, uh, what is happening that you have to uh, uh, you are introducing conditioning through y okay so you have to so simply just uh, put it here uh, that uh, expected value rule kind of approach that uh, take uh, take this property and uh, integrate with with respect to density of y so it is just uh, uh, derived from conditional uh, sorry uh, conditioning and uh, law of total probability and here just uh, delicately handle it and further it will be converted into in the same framework and here you are getting the same output so it is coming with mixture of conditioning and law of total probability and it is giving same result and what is next you job just differentiate this one and get your uh, pdf so what would be pdf of z it would be simply differentiate this one one minus uh, just apply a product rule here uh, z time 1 minus z minus uh, ln z simplify it then you will get your uh, your desired pdf now next approach we will discuss about derived distribution for transfer of uh, transformation of two or more than two random variable so suppose x y are two jointly continuous random variable then we come up with uh, two new random variable z and w z happens to be function of x y w is also function of x y so z is g1 of x y and z w is g2 of x y where g is a vector function from R2 to R2 vector function having two components G1 and G2 okay vector value function from calculus math 1 you know what is the vector value function so G happens to be vector value function so now what is happening that uh, we we come up with the inverse image of uh, G that we are calling it H so H is again a uh, that means uh, what we call it uh, uh, branch wise H is again uh, factor value function from R2 to R2. Okay, and hence we can express uh, uh, revert back uh, x y in term of uh, z w. So you, we will say that x is a function of uh, z w, h1 of z w, and y is a function of h2 of z w. So all these are uh, given to us. 
फ्रॉम दिस गिवन जी वी कैन डू ऑल दिस दिस आर सिंपल एनालिटिकल अप्रोच टू कंप्यूट विद ऑल दिस यू कैन डू फ्रॉम सिंपली यू कैन से दैट इट इज पार्ट ऑफ कैलकुलस यू कैन डू ऑल दोज देयर देयर इज नो एनी इशू ओके सो नाउ वी आर इंटरेस्टेड टू हियर इफ एक्स वाई आर वेरिंग जॉइंटली definitely z and w would also vary jointly okay they would also jointly continuous so if they are jointly continuous then we have to come up with joint density of z and w and if once we are having joint density of z and w then we have to find density of z then we have to find density of w all those we have to find it so how we can find first joint density of z and w that means uh, multiply the joint density of x and y with the argument in term of z and w that uh, h happens to be uh, inverse map of g okay uh, so inverse map of g simply we call it inverse map of g so at times jacobian so here remember that jacobian how we to how to find jacobian of so jacobian of transformation so remember that the direction of transformation from where to where you go you are going from uh, x y plane to z w plane so in the what would happen so in numerator we will have so generally we jacobian uh, we write it like this way jacobian would be function of uh, zw write it as a function of zw as a matrix zw and uh, the uh, in calculus you had you might have seen notation like this way so we are integrating so differentiating xy this one is our primitive random variable or prior random variable and posterior random variable is uh, zw with respect to so how you can deal with this one there are various approach to define jacobian so what is take uh, x at a time first component is x and differentiate with z then take again take x at differentiate with w then take y differentiate with z then take y again at differentiate with w so this one is your jacobian matrix or jacobian of transformation also you can call it jacobian of transformation so once you are getting so it is just uh, uh, what 2 by 2 matrix so what would be here uh, determinant so we have to come up with determinant of this one so easily we can find determinant this is the determinant of jacobian easily we can find determinant it is very easy to find determinant so multiply this diagonal element and uh, multiply this off diagonal element and do subtraction okay take difference so that would give value of determinant so this was this but the single vertical line it is talking about determinant of the jacobian okay so this is the, so uh, it very easy to find uh, joint density of z and w so here i i would like to take one example do we have time just uh, i will take this example afterward we will finish this lecture so we are having two random variable x and y which are what independent and having uh, ascending normal distribution so that means x is having distribution what no ascending normal distribution that means x is having mean zero it is a normal distribution uh, normal random variable with mean zero and variance one and y is also ascending normal di distribution that means it is a normal distribution with mean zero and variance one both are ascending normal distribution that means we know the distribution of x and y now we come up with uh, two function one z as a twice of x minus y and w as minus x plus y okay so we are having so we have transform x y plane to z w plane our intention is that we have to find the joint density of uh, w and z so how we can find so i will just go through this approach i want to go that hectic approach so uh, through this approach uh, Uh, x y are jointly continuous and independent so easily we can come up with joint density of x y what would be that it would be very simple to find joint density of x y by, by multiplying the cross we, we know that x and y both happen to be independent to each other so multiply the corresponding density density of x is what it is 1 by a square root of 2 pi e to the power minus x square by 2 likewise y is having density 1 by root a square root of 2 pi e to the power minus 
y square by 2 and multiply these two this one is f of x this one is f of y multiply these two this is the joint density of x and y so easily we can get expression of four joint density of uh, x y now once we are having joint density of x and y so we will do little bit analytic approach to find inverse images of uh, g what is g here g is given that g1 is twice of x minus y and g2 is uh, minus x plus y and that means z is as a function of z is equal to twice of x minus y and w is equal to minus x plus y so all these are given to us okay from this given as we do little bit uh, transformation and from there we get uh, explicit representation of x y as a function of z so x would be z just do little bit algebra here you will see that x would be equal to z plus w and y would be equal to z plus twice of W. Okay, so that means uh, this function it is called it H1. This one you call it H2. Okay, so from here easily you can find Jacobian of transformation. So what would it, what would be Jacobian of transformation? As I had all, already suggested, uh, Jacobian of transformation would be, it would be what uh, first uh, this component would be dx by dz. Uh, so this is the x. So differentiate this one with respect to z then what you are getting one then second component uh, in the first row you will get you differentiate this one with respect to w then again you will get one now you come to second row so in second row uh, what you have to do this this one is y and this one is x what we call it so differentiate y with respect to z what again you will get one differentiate y with respect to w you will get two so this one is your jacobian matrix so what is the determinant of this jacobian matrix so determinant is uh, 2 minus 1 so 1 determinant of this Jacobian is 1 so easily we got the determinant uh, of Jacobian so easily we can find uh, density of W what how we can find so by multiplying the density of uh, joint density of x and y with uh, h1 h2 as argument okay and uh, this is the Jacobian that one is equal to 1 so overall what is that we have to uh, in the joint density of x or y it was uh, what we have to replace that uh, x y we have to replace x by what uh, here z plus w in the joint density of x y we have to replace x by z plus w and y by z plus twice of w and after all those simplification you will get an explicit form of joint density of x y this is the joint density of x y okay so other thing we will discuss in next class just <laughs> your